Jude Young, Brian Alley Walsh with SportsNola.com. It's Friday, about a half an hour before the start of round two of the 2011 NFL Draft. Jude, uh, let's quickly recap what happened last night. Uh, a, a, mega, a mega buster night for, uh, for the Saints officials. Pick up two number one draft picks and they hit needs in both players. Let's talk briefly with the, the pick at number 24. Well, Cam Jordan's a guy who uh, the average fan wouldn't have known very well until they start following the draft and they see what he did during Senior Bowl week. He was the most dominant defensive player there. and We know how closely the Saints pay attention to what goes on at Senior Bowl practices and in the game, so he certainly caught their eye. He's the type of guy who can be, uh, uh, probably from day one, a strong side starter on the defensive line and a guy who can be a, a real compliment a bookend to Will Smith, and most people had him going up at least in the top 20, so you have to feel like the Saints received great value. Uh, they were helped, of course, by several quarterbacks going earlier than expected, particularly Jake Locker in the top 10 at number 8, and of course uh, Christian Ponder going at 12 to the Vikings, uh, another real shocker there, but that worked in the Saints' favor, gave them options. As you know, they thought about trading back, but in the end they really couldn't pass up one defensive talent, and they really didn't want to pass up an offensive talent as well, and they wanted getting their man on that side of the ball as well. Uh, Rick Riper's director of college scouting came out and, and talked with us moments after they, t they took uh, Cameron Jordan at 24, and uh, no sooner did he come out and speak than they made a trade with the New England Patriots at number 28. They, they uh, sent uh, their number two pick this year and then their number one pick li uh, next year uh, for the right to move into the number 28 spot, and they selected... They selected a guy who won the Heisman Trophy at Alabama, Mark Ingram, and uh, showed a real shift towards the thinking of a uh, pass-happy Peyton, as uh, he's mm -hmm. sometimes called. Sean Peyton definitely wanting to reestablish the running game with a dependable guy, and few guys were more dependable in all phases of the game than Mark Ingram. He provides potentially that complete game back as a blocker and a receiver that this team is looking for. And, uh, well, Brian, you reported it. You thought they were going to take him at 24 overall. We heard heard so much smoke uh, from Mickey Loomis and Sean Payton leading up to the draft. You, just normally, you don't normally hear right. head coaches and GMs doing that, basically telling you we're in love with this guy. But they certainly backed up that thinking. And uh, as far as prices to pay go on impact guys, I think they did better than the Atlanta Falcons yes. who had to package five picks together to, in essence, grab a number two wide receiver. The Saints grab what they believe is going to be a number one back for them who can get it done right now during the golden years of a Drew Brees at quarterback, giving them a chance to try to get back to the Super Bowl right away. And the uh, interesting decision now facing Saints officials, particularly Sean Payton, is how to use Mark Ingram. Obviously, he's going to be a bell cow. He'd like to be a featured back, get as many touches as you can, Jude. But, you know, you've got Reggie Bush making $11.8 scheduled to make $11.8 million. There's a lot of conjecture now. What does it do to his future here in New Orleans? It's hard to track exactly what the Saints might be thinking now since they've made this move with all of their running backs. Certainly you mentioned Reggie Bush. Who knows what they're really thinking behind the scenes. I'm sure there's a price that can be met that they would keep him around at the same time. Once we know what they can do as far as what the NFL is going to allow as far as moving players, uh, they haven't made that ruling as of uh, this point, then perhaps Reggie Bush has a price that somebody else can pay in this league to grab a hold of him. That's that's an interesting question, but you also wonder about the other two backs who carried the load the past two years. Pierre Thomas, they secure his services before the lockout, and he's a guy who's a versatile back, probably the most complete back on this team before this Mark Ingram pick. I think they still want to keep him around. I think the deal is friendly, and we know in the NFL you need more than one back to go through the 16-game haul and then be healthy in the playoffs. The Saints weren't able to do mm -hmm. that last year by the time they reached Seattle. And of course, Chris Ivory, he's a guy who was outstanding as a rookie when he was healthy. Mm -hmm. But I think his running style and limitations outside of just being a runner, not the best blocker or receiver, uh, meant that he has a place in this league, but perhaps as the third back in a rotation might be his ceiling. This can all work out, but you're right. The, the first question has to be Reggie Bush. The price for the Saints and the price somebody else may be willing to pay for Bush, those are going to be the two questions that need to be answered. Yeah, it was a kind of explained to me today, Drew, that, um, that this pick may not necessarily affect a player as much as it might affect the number of touches each one of these backs might get uh, as the se when, when we get into the season here. Uh, but, but I do know this, that uh, if 
people come back healthy uh, at the start of training camp, you've got Mark Ingram, Pierre Thomas, Reggie Bush, and who am I forgetting here? Chris Ivory. And Chris Ivory. Mm -hmm. If they all come back healthy, and then Lionel Hamilton right. is sitting on the wings, who's a great, a very good special teams player mm -hmm. who could fill in a pinch. So, you know, I, I, I wrote last night in my post that I thought it spelled the end immediately. I, I've had a night of consideration. I'm not ready to, to write Reggie out of the city at right. or off this team. Granted, uh, it's an easy thing to say that this would affect him and, and because of his million dollar, multi-million dollar uh, salary. But I, I do know this, they'd, they'd like to keep him here if they can. He does provide a, possess a different skill set than every other back sure. except perhaps Chris Ivory. And, and, well, I say Pierre Thomas probably. So there is a spot on this team. Now, whether or not the dynamics, the personalities can work remains to be seen. But I thought all, overall the two picks here were just excellent choices for their football team. Now, it does not leave them with a number two right. tonight. Mm -hmm. That's a quality pick, but it does leave them with, excuse me, with two number threes. I think it's uh, 56 and... No, 56 was the I'm pick. Sorry. Away. So a pick in the 70s yeah. as well as a pick in the and 90s. Yeah, so 76 and 88, right. I think it so is. So you got two top 90 two picks. Two good picks. And, yeah. and you could package with those two as well. Who knows if there's somebody else that they like. We expect more wheeling and dealing at the beginning of round mm -hmm. two with the new three-day draft set up because people have had a night and then to sleep on it and then a day to work and mm -hmm. call and, and decide what they might want to do. We might see trades in the first first uh, 10 picks or so of this second round, guys that people had graded as first round picks still available, and who knows? The Saints were willing to package picks to get their man in Ingram. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there's a player that fits another need that the Saints view as a top 20, 25 talent still available on the board that they think would be worth uh, two third round mm -hmm. picks, or maybe up another pick next year. They talk about mortgaging the future, but we've seen the Saints over the years, starting uh, at the beginning of the last decade, be able to build a team quickly without picks. Mm -hmm. You can utilize free agency more so. We certainly saw that after the Ricky Williams trade, mm -hmm. and this team was suddenly a division winner, and, and one that if they would have had better quarterback play with Aaron Brooks, would have had even better than average seasons after that 2000 division win. So we know it, yeah. it can be done that way. This team's trying to win now. They want guys that can help right away. And if they think there's a guy in the 30s, Mm -hmm. pick-wise in this draft that can help them more than those other two picks in the third round right away. Uh, again, Drew Brees in his prime. They may very well do that, and I think there's a lot of teams thinking that way for different needs, including teams still looking for a quarterback. So there might be a lot of activity early on, and it wouldn't shock me if the Saints are uh, amongst the teams involved in that. Yeah, I think uh, on, on this particular uh, evening, I think they're, they would be looking at a, an outside linebacker, an inline tight end, and then a, probably a wide receiver. I don't know if return uh, a return guy is necessarily on their their uh, thought in their thought process right now because of the change of the rules right. at the recent owners meetings. But anyway, it should be fun. It always is here on the second day of the draft. So for Jude Young, Brian Alley Walsh with SportsNola.com, please stay in touch later tonight. We'll be back. We'll recap this evening's events. Again, Jude Young, Brian Alley Walsh, SportsNola.com. See you later.